Hey guys, welcome back to another day in Loose Powder Week. And today we're going to be talking about the Chanel Loose Powder. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce all of those French words. Um, I have it in the lightest shade, which is 20 Claire Translucent 1. So if you're interested in seeing me apply this, do my full day wear test, and give you my final thoughts at the end of the day, then just keep on watching. So we're back with another Loose Powder Week day, and I hope you guys aren't sick of this yet. I'm really enjoying doing these series only because it really forces me to really inspect this makeup. Usually, you know, I'll buy makeup, I'll put it on, I look in the mirror, oh, it looks pretty good or whatever. But this really forces me to kind of like dig deep and like figure out what it is that I like about it, if I don't like it, what it is that I don't like about it. So anyway, I'm having a really, really good time. And this Chanel Loose Powder is something that you guys recommended to me over and over again. I mean, several of you have either recommended it to me or have said, uh, I've heard great things about this powder. Can you please do a review? So I'm really excited for today's wear test. So this is totally a first impressions. I just ordered this from... Nordstrom, I believe. Here's the packaging. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with the Chanel packaging. Uh, nothing exceptional here. I believe this powder comes in three different shades. The one that I got is the lightest. It is $52. And I was just looking on the Chanel site to try and figure out, you know, should I use this as a setting or finishing? Should I use it as both? It seems like I could definitely use it as a setting powder. That's definitely what is being said here in like the Q&A section. So two interesting uh, questions and answers. One question, I have dry skin and need a loose powder to set my foundation. Will this powder work for me? The beauty expert answered, our powder is ultra soft, loose powder that provides sheer lightweight coverage with a matte finish. This powder is good for all skin types that are looking for matte finishing powder. So in previous answers, I saw that it's a great setting powder, they've said, and now they're saying that it makes a great matte finishing powder. So if you are curious about which shade you should get, let's say you're a little bit off from mine, I would take a look at the Chanel site, go into the Q&A section of this particular product. They have a lot of scenarios here. You know, I wear this foundation shade, which powder should I get? So you'll probably find the answer for you. Let me go ahead and open this guy up. Uh, so the lid is a screw off lid. There is a Chanel puff. Oops, puff inside and typical sifter the holes are centered in the middle here and I'm gonna go ahead and take the seal off oh while I'm doing this let me tell you right now it is about nine o'clock in the morning and I decided to use my new Chanel Le Beige uh, tinted SPF and my Chanel Longwear concealer today instead of the clay de peau figured since I was using a Chanel powder, I may as well go all Chanel. So this is the foundation that I'm wearing and this is the concealer that I'm using. They suggest in their description to use the powder puff and uh, to lightly kind of tap that to set your foundation and your concealer. So I'm going to go ahead and try that. I'm always a little bit shy about that because I feel like it tends to leave a thicker layer of powder that way. But since they directed us to do it that way, I'm going to give it a shot. So I'm going to use the powder puff that was provided. I'm just going to turn the powder upside down to get some on there. Not a lot. <laughs> so there's just a little bit on the puff. It says to knock off any excess on the back of your hand, which I'm doing. And I'm going to lightly press all over the skin. Just that little bit, I already see the mattifying effect. A little bit more here. Okay, there's a very light layer applied to this half of my face using the powder puff. I definitely see the mattifying effect already. I like the way it has handled like my nose area and my chin so far, and it I don't think it's making my under eyes look dry or drier than they are. I mean, I, I think they look fine. So that's with the powder puff, and that was definitely a very, very light layer. I really did not pick up a lot of powder. Uh, with each application. So let's just try it out on the other side with a brush. I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, La Mer powder brush and I'm going to knock some into the cap this time. Just pick up a bit with the brush and now I'm going to press onto my eye area, press onto my cheek area, and then sweep. Just pick up a teensy bit more and apply some to my forehead here. 
Well, I feel like the application between the two sides is identical. I don't see much of a difference at all. I feel like there's the same level of mattifying effect. The area around my eyes, on my forehead, all look very, very similar. And the area around my nose and my chin, everything looks really good. So if I had to choose, I would definitely go with a brush just because it's uh, it's just a little bit faster. Uh, with the puff, I feel like, you know, I have to kind of press it, uh, make sure I get every spot and everything. So I don't know. I feel like it's a little bit fussier. Anyway, I would go with the brush, especially since the application is similar. And since I have a little bit left in my lid here, I'm just going to use a little bit, just a little bit more here and apply that to my nose. I do have dry sensitive skin, but my nose, the tip of my nose is the oiliest by far. So I'm just going to add a little bit extra there. And that definitely looks uh, matted down. Not matted down. That sounds awful. It definitely looks more matte than before. <laughs> okay, so let's do some close-ups. I just want you guys to see if you can um, my skin up close. I think this is just a very natural matte finish, much like its description. Uh, nothing weird going on on my forehead. I think the area around my eyes looks fine. I don't think it's accentuated my fine lines at all. The skin next to my nose, I have very large pores there. I think it's blurred my pores a little bit. Maybe not as much as by Terry powder. That was like amazing. Uh, this, this just kind of softens the appearance of the pores, but I don't think it uh, makes them disappear in any way. And then I feel like the rest of my skin, just again, just very natural very matte. I think this makes for an excellent setting powder. There are no sparkles or anything going on in this particular powder. So that typically is like my favorite kind of setting powder. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put on the rest of my makeup. And even though I'm not the biggest fan of a matte finish, I'm going to go ahead and use this powder as a finishing powder also just to see how it works in buffing out my makeup and everything. So I'll be right back. Just finished putting on my makeup and uh, previously during this week while I've been testing out these loose powders, I've been putting down, um, I guess depending on the powder or whatever, putting down as little as possible on my cheeks so that we could really see how the powder works on its own. Um, but today I decided to put on bronzer and blush. Um, I did not put on any highlighter because I figured if this is a matte finishing powder, What's the point? So I do have bronzer and blush down. Um, I have eyebrows, eyeshadow, uh, lipstick, lip gloss, and that's it. So let's go ahead and use this as a finishing powder. I'm gonna use it very, very lightly, again, because uh, a matte finish is not my favorite, but for those of you who do like matte finishes, I do want to uh, demonstrate that for you. So I'm gonna use my favorite finishing brush, which is the Sonia G Face One brush. And I really want to buff out this area. I kind of went in a little bit um, dark with the bronze and the blush because I knew we'd be going over and kind of buffing it all out. So I want to see how well this powder does in terms of that. So I'm going to dip this powder right into the well here. I knocked off the excess, so that's what I have left. And I'm going to simply pounce that on and buff it in. So there it is buffed into my cheek area. It definitely blended out my bronzer and my blush quite a bit. Here it is without. So you can see how much stronger it is. And here it is with. I was gonna say, I don't think I'm gonna do my forehead because I have such deep expression lines and a matte finish usually is not that great. But for this video, let's go ahead and do that and just stamp that on my forehead. And then buff it in a little bit. So there it is, uh, finishing powder, no finishing powder. And I do feel like at this point it is lightening up my complexion. So this additional layer of using it as a finishing powder, I think is starting to lighten up my complexion a little bit. So if that's not what you want and you have a similar uh, skin tone to me, you may want to get the medium uh, powder. Yeah, this is 20 Claire Translucent 1, so maybe they have like a 30 maybe that's the medium powder, um, you may wanna go for that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just finish up my face by applying it to the side. Okay, here it is all over my face. I'm liking this powder. The matte finish is, again, not my personal preference, but I don't feel I look dry. I don't feel I look unnatural in any way. This is a very nice and natural matte finish. So if you're into matte finishes, but you don't wanna to look too stark, I think this is a good option, at least so far. But we're gonna do a wear test. I'm actually gonna be out 
kind of all day. Uh, maybe I'll do a check-in in public, which I hate doing. <laughs> But maybe I will do that and then I will definitely be back at the end of the day for my final check-in and to give you my final thoughts. So I will see you later. Hey guys, I'm back. I'm sorry I missed my check-in. It is like 5.30 in the afternoon. So I've had this makeup on for about eight and a half hours. I was out all day and I was in and out. I was actually walking up and down the strip a little bit. It is freaking hot outside. Uh, so I definitely was schwitzing a little bit. Uh, actually not too much, I mean, because it is so dry here. But anyway, I am rambling at this point. So I have a few thoughts on this powder. I think that it has very good staying power because I was in and out of the mall, I was in and out of the Venetian, I was in the sun, I was not in the sun, I was in air conditioning, etc., etc. And I think that it has held up really, really well. My skin still has a matte finish to it, but it is still has that like natural matte finish to it unlike the by terry which i thought was like very very matte this just looks like regular skin my skin just looks like my skin there's nothing uh overly radiant about it it's not like i just moisturized or anything i think it looks very good around my oilier areas uh my nose and my chin it hasn't done any of that caking up um it has faded quite a bit around my nose but i think that is fairly normal especially because i was uh, out and about today, um, but there is no caking up. I did do a lot of check-ins throughout today personally, and it's not like anything shifted. Like the by Terry, I felt like it looked really awful around my nose midday, and then it looked fine at the end of the day. So none of that happened. Very, very consistent performance with this powder. So the only very minor, minor criticism I have is that I feel like my under eyes look teensy bit dry and I'm not sure because I used my Chanel Longwear concealer instead of the Clé de Peau concealer which is what I've been using all week. That Clé de Peau concealer is uh, relatively new. This Chanel Longwear concealer I've had for a very long time. I've used a lot so this has been opened and closed a lot and when I put it on this morning I even thought that it was getting a little bit old that I thought the texture didn't feel quite as uh, slippy and this is like a, a gel concealer and the best thing or one of the best things about this concealer is that it blends like a dream and I remember thinking that I had it took a little bit more for me to blend so I feel like the consistency of this concealer has changed a little bit not surprising again I've had this for a while and have used it very consistently it is uh, pretty much gone it's probably time for me to get a new one so with that said i'm not sure if that's what i'm seeing under my eyes it could be the concealer doing something weird because this powder is not doing anything uh weird to the lines that i have uh, or the dryness that i have around my forehead it's not making my eczema issues up here um look any drier or cakier um it's not sort of emphasizing my very deep expression lines on my forehead. So I don't know, I don't wanna to jump to the conclusion that it's just the powder when it could be the concealer also. But that is my observation that I do feel like my under eyes look just a teensy bit dry. And I really like the finish. I was very, very skeptical when I was reading the description on the Chanel site, it just kept saying matte, matte, matte. If you want a matte finish, it did say, I think in the name of it, it is natural. Yes, natural finish loose powder. But it made me a little bit nervous. I didn't want anything too matte. But I think the proper word to describe this powder really is natural. I don't find it to be matte. Anyway, we are going to continue on. I have two more loose powders to do. So we're actually going to have eight days in this loose powder week. So that is it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about this powder, please comment down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, if you're enjoying loose powder week. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video.